This video was brought to you by Curiosity Stream. The war in Ukraine has been a rare point of bipartisan consensus for the last nine months or so. The vast majority of both Democrats and Republicans have criticized Putin's invasion and expressed support for Ukraine's territorial integrity. And don't forget the various Ukraine aid bills that have enjoyed massive, albeit not absolute, majorities in both the House and the Senate. However, over the course of the war, the Republicans' enthusiasm for Ukraine has waned. And on Monday, a group of 30 progressive Democrat representatives sent a letter to the White House asking Biden to, quote, make vigorous diplomatic efforts in support of a negotiated settlement and ceasefire in order to avert World War III. While the letter was quickly retracted, it's clear that the bipartisan consensus on Ukraine is under strain. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at why both parties were originally so supportive of Ukraine, how that's changed over time, and whether this bipartisan consensus can really survive the midterms. If you like this channel, then be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when we release more TLDR US content. So, the first thing to say here is that while some right-leaning media outlets have been skeptical of the war ever since it began, in Congress, Ukraine has really been a bipartisan issue. Before the invasion even began, when Putin was just amassing troops at Ukraine's borders, Bipartisan delegations were already traveling to Ukraine and releasing statements in support of Ukraine's territorial integrity. Then, on March 2nd, a couple of days after the invasion began, the US House of Representatives passed a resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire, the full withdrawal of Russian forces from Ukrainian territory, and, quote, the continued use of sanctions to fully isolate Putin's regime. And all of these measures were backed with near total support, with just three members voting against the resolution. So why did both sides immediately support Ukraine? Well, first and foremost, American support for Ukraine just makes strategic sense. America clearly considers Putin to be a geostrategic adversary, so military aid to Ukraine is a potent and cost-effective way of undermining him as well as strengthening NATO and deterring other authoritarians from engaging in similar wars of aggression in the future. And this approach unites both the hard-nosed Republican neocons, who see aid to Ukraine as an effective way of advancing America's strategic interests, and more idealistic democratic progressives, who see aid to Ukraine as the moral thing to do in the face of aggression from an imperialist bully. And among the public, support for Ukraine is also very popular on both sides of the aisle. Despite Trump's best efforts, for the most part, Americans don't really like Russia or Putin. And they're actually pretty keen on Ukraine. On top of this, polling suggests that American sentiment towards Ukraine has actually improved over time. By mid-March, YouGov polling found that 81% of Americans were saying Ukraine was either friendly or an ally. Conversely, Russia had become one of America's least favorite countries, with about 70% of Americans describing Russia as an enemy. And importantly, this anti-Russian feeling cuts across party lines. That same polling by YouGov found that Democrat and Republican attitudes over Ukraine were basically identical, with massive majorities on both sides perceiving Ukraine as an ally and Russia as an enemy. You get the idea then. Support for Ukraine is both politically popular and strategically shrewd, which is why basically every US politician originally decided to support it. However, this sentiment has waned over time, and you can tell this just by looking at the votes for Ukraine-related bills over time. As we mentioned a second ago, that first resolution introduced in early March passed the House with just three Republicans voting against it. However, on March 9th, 15 House Republicans and two House Democrats voted against the ending importation of Russian oil act. 
Then on April 27th, 17 Republicans voted against a resolution expressing support for Moldova's territorial integrity amid speculation that Russia might be about to mobilize its forces in Transnistria. Then in May, a total of 68 Republicans, 57 representatives and 11 senators voted against Biden's $40 billion aid package. You get the idea then. While Republican support for Ukraine was nearly unanimous back in March, it has waned since then. Republican politicians have even warned Biden that he should expect the trend to continue if Republicans win at the midterms. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said just last week that if Republicans win a majority in the House, they will end what they describe as the blank check policy towards Ukraine. Senior Republicans were quick to walk back McCarthy's comments, with Michael McCall, the top Republican representative in the Foreign Affairs Committee, insisting that the Republicans only wanted a bit more discretion over spending and would still be supporting Ukraine wholeheartedly. Nonetheless, many Republican House members do tow Trump's line on Ukraine, which is that it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. So if they win their races in November, we can expect to see Republican support for Ukraine wane yet further. And worryingly for McConnell and co, this could create a split within the party between the old school neocons who see American support for Ukraine as a rare opportunity to advance America's strategic interests and the Trumpist isolationists who think that America should just focus on America and at least in some cases are sympathetic to Putin's strongman politics. And it's not just the Republicans either. As we mentioned in the intro, on Monday, 30 Democratic progressives sent a letter to Biden urging him to open negotiations with Putin, apparently in order to mitigate the risk of nuclear escalation or World War III. While the progressives did quickly retract this letter on Tuesday, claiming that it had been conflated with Republican opposition to Ukraine, it does suggest that eight months in, enthusiasm among the US political class is waning across the board. So why is this? Well, it's probably because enthusiasm among the electorate, and especially among Republicans, is waning. The number of voters who believe that America has the responsibility to protect Ukraine has declined, and a majority of Republicans now say that America doesn't. Across the aisle, a majority of Democrats say that America does indeed have the responsibility to defend Ukraine, while just 31% of Democrats say that they don't. Similarly, an increasing number of Republicans now believe that America is spending too much money sending aid to Ukraine with 29% of Republicans believing that the US is sending too much aid to Ukraine compared to 22% who think that they're spending too little. Now, this is up 19% from March, when just 10% of Republicans said that the US was sending too much aid, and 40% said that they were sending too little. So if politicians are turning against Ukraine because of the electorate, then why is electorate enthusiasm waning too? And why is it especially among Republicans? Well, it's probably because the war has been going on for a long while now, and a bit of Ukraine fatigue is setting in. America is also suffering through its own economic crisis at the moment, with inflation still above 8%, which makes voters less enthusiastic about big expensive aid packages being sent to foreign countries. Republicans' enthusiasm is probably waning faster than Democrats, though, because various right-wing media figures have been using their platforms to criticize Biden's Ukraine policy. Tucker Carlson, for example, has spent the last couple of weeks claiming that Russia is winning the war and parroting Moscow's narrative about NATO enlargement and Ukrainian Nazis, much to the delight of Kremlin propagandists, who regularly feature Carlson on their programs. And it's a similar story with Trump too, who's reasserted his influence over the party during midterm season. Now, Trump has always been conspicuously friendly with Putin. In fact, in February, Trump praised Putin as a genius and savvy for moving troops onto Ukraine's border. While Trump changed his tone somewhat after the invasion began, focusing more on the risk of nuclear war than Putin's alleged genius, he's still opposed to sending aid to Ukraine. And if enough of his supporters get into Congress this November, then he might just get his way. Now, if that puts you in a bad mood, then this might cheer you up. 
Last year, Team TLDR congregated for the first annual political pumpkin carving competition. Each team member had 15 minutes to carve a random politician's face into a pumpkin before the others had to guess who they'd carved. Everyone was furious at last year's result, so we brought the game back from the dead for round two. This time though, we headed to Rory's farm in Essex to up the game. This time it was also a lot more serious and a lot more competitive. Who did we carve? Who won the contest? Find out in TLDR's second annual political pumpkin carving contest. Exclusively on Nebula. If you want to watch that video, along with a ton of other exclusive content, then you should head over to Nebula. That's a streaming service that we made with a bunch of our creator friends, and where we post exclusive explainers and some fun videos too, like our team attempting the British citizenship or our blooper reel. On Wednesday, Peru's Prime Minister... Oh, God. I'm just going to ask next door, I'll be back. Turns out there's a bunch of useless next door. Nebula viewers also get many of our videos before YouTube, as well as all of our content ad-free. Now, if you want to sign up, the best way to do that right now is with the Nebula Curiosity Stream deal. That way, if you sign up to Curiosity Stream, home to some of the best documentaries available online, you'll also get Nebula included absolutely free. That means two streaming services for less than $15 a year. Anyway, thanks for supporting the channel and click the link in the description to check out Nebula and the pumpkin video.